Hi, I'm Steve, a developer on the Python Tools team at Microsoft, and in this video I'm going to show you some of the highlights of Python Tools for Visual Studio 2.0. We've always had great IntelliSense, and in PTVS 2 we've made it even better. The first thing you'll notice is that lists of possible names will filter as you type. For example, as I type from parse, the possibilities reduce from all of my packages to only those ones that match. You can see that we are not just showing entries that start with parse, but other similar ones. With arrow keys, I can select opt parse and commit it. This filtering is designed to help you find what you need, even if you don't know exactly what it is called. Here, I can start typing formatter to see all the available formatters. Everywhere you see a list of completions, you can search and filter using the smart matching. Here, I know that I want indented help formatter, so I can type its initials, I, H, F, to jump straight to it. Because I'm deriving from an existing class, when I type def in the class body, I will see a list of possible overrides. I can select one of these by typing an abbreviated name, and insert a function definition that calls the function on the base class. Advanced Python developers know that every object has special methods whose names begin with a double underscore. However, because these are very rarely used directly, we hide them until you've typed the first two underscores. We've also made improvements to how we analyze closures and function objects. Here, we have a function that returns a lambda with the parameter. We call it twice with different parameters, and then randomly call one of the returned lambdas. We can see that each lambda is distinct. One returns int, and the other returns float. But because we don't know which of these two calls will occur, we assume that result is going to be either an integer or a float. Integer and float have some common members, but most of their methods are only on one or the other. If you look at the possible completions, we see a full list, along with the types that they came from. We can safely use image or real, because both integers and floats have these members. Sometimes we won't know all of the variable types you might expect. Python is a complicated language, and figuring out what types a variable has can be difficult. Here we have a function that clearly takes a string. However, because nobody ever calls this function, we have no way to determine the type of the parameter. Once we add a call, we can see that a string is a string, and we get full editor assistance. But what if someone calls our function with invalid parameters? If I add some calls, now we think a string could actually be an int, a string, a float, or a list. If we're absolutely certain that these types are invalid, we probably want to assert and make our program crash as quickly as possible. I can do this with an assert is instance statement. Now, because there's no way that this code will ever run if a string is not a string, we know exactly what type it is. Even if nobody ever calls. We've always supported go to definition and find all references, and PTVS 2.0 now includes navigate to. Selecting this command, or pressing control and comma, displays a dialog or search bar where you can search throughout your project. We use the same search as in the editor, so you only have to type something similar to the name for it to appear. Selecting any item will take you directly to where it is defined, whether it's a class, function, or module variable. This was just a quick look at some of the highlights of Python tools for Visual Studio 2.0. Go to pytools.codeplex.com to download it, it's completely free, and also to give us feedback on what will help you be more productive with Python.